So, call me crazy, but it seems to me at this point that the response to the coronavirus is dramatically overblown. Maybe not dramatically, maybe that's too strong. But I don't know if you've been paying attention or how much it's impacted you where you live. But the reality on the ground, okay, there's the realistic stats about the coronavirus death potential and how many people are actually getting it. So far, there are less than 100 fatalities in the United States, less than 100. I don't know where you live, again, but where I live in Southern California, they have just shut down all of L.A. in response. In response. They have dramatically shut down. Rest restaurants can only operate at 50% capacity. All bars are closed until further notice. All movie theaters are closed until further notice. Disney shut down. Now, that just strikes me as overblown. They did the same thing in New York State. So basically, in response to a virus that's killed less than 100 people nationwide, okay, we have decided of our own accord and of our own volition to more or less guarantee a recession in the near term. That's what we're doing. We're, let's, let's shut down 20% of our economic activity of our nation in response to a virus that's killed less than 100 people. Pretty much guaranteeing a recession in the near term. Now, I get the medical rationale that we're trying to avoid a spike on... Um, that the virus is highly contagious, more contagious than the flu, by the way, so you know. <gasps> oh my God, I'm freaking out. <laughs> Don't freak out. But it's nowhere near as fatal as we're pretending that it is. You don't get the virus and die. It's not the plague. We don't have to shut down entire cities in response to a virus that's killed less than 100 people in the United States of America. Seems to me we're like we are actually creating a risk. We, we're guaranteeing recession in the short term. If you looked at the stock market, that seems like a given. It's possible we might bounce back, but it's not necessarily plausible. And we're potentially playing with the idea of having a recession, a depression. A depression will kill more people than 100 people. I mean, when you shut down economic activity in a city like Los Angeles and you close restaurants, you close the tour, you basically shut down the tourist industry. Okay, a lot of those people live paycheck to paycheck. And more importantly, a lot of those businesses live paycheck to paycheck. In other words, they need to make, they need the revenue coming in in order to make payroll. So they'll be laying off restaurant workers, bus boys, you name it. That has the potential to be a lot more destructive and harmful to people's actual lived lives than the potential of getting the coronavirus. That's my, that's my point. Doesn't strike me as a wise or prudent decision. Now, maybe you need to do some of it because, like I said, they are trying to they're trying to avoid a spike in, in contagion. I get that. So avoid crowded, you know, avoid situation where there are crowds, things like that. But there's some sort of response in between that could be more measured and a little bit more prudent. Because right now, the, 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 the odds of me dying of coronavirus are dramatically small. Especially if you're under 50 years old, almost nobody dies when they get it. The, the odds of me being dramatically affected by the economic slowdown are really high. <laughs> They're really scarily high. That's my point. And it doesn't seem that anybody in, in the powers that be are paying attention to the discrepancy between the freak out of the response and the actual potential harm to the general public. Because the, a depression, an economic slowdown is a lot more potentially impactful to the public at large then at this point the coronavirus is. The other thing is if we over-respond now, we shut down New York State. Basically, they've shut down New York State. They've shut down New York State in response to the coronavirus. That's overblown. That may seem prudent now. I don't think it is. I think it's going to prove to be stupid. There are a couple of different possibilities for this coronavirus. First of all, hopefully, and this is a real possibility if you're freaked out about the virus itself, is it seems to die out in the heat, like most viruses. Which means by the time late April rolls around, there could be a dramatic slowdown in corona cases. Now, hopefully the, the, the economy bounces back quickly if, that, if that's the case. But there's a real potential right now that we are going to destroy the national economy in response to a virus that has killed less than 100 people. That's, that's what I'm seeing right now. And that looks like a real potential possibility. I believe it was Nike who said they were going to shut down all their stores. All of their stores. Everywhere. In I, I'm not sure if it was Nike. Somebody said that. Businesses are cutting their hours back. That's guaranteeing economic slowdown. That's something we've never done before. 
And that seems to me a lot more potentially hazardous than the actual numbers behind the virus itself. So it doesn't strike me as that response is particularly prudent. That's all I'm saying. Now, I could be wrong, but I tend to be not an alarmist about medical stuff. I tend to be like, you know, I'll go to the doctor at the last possible second. But the reality of the, the actual fate, fatal potential of the virus itself seems to be a lot less destructive than we are making it out to be. If you're under the age of 50, so far there are no fatalities if you're under the age of 50. So the real at-risk population of the older people and people who are sick and people who have, you know, prior health problems. Seems to be a much wiser course of action would be to isolate them rather than shut down the economic activity of the entire population. Other thing is, if you, if you, we, it's possible to get the virus and Tom Hanks has the virus, he ain't gonna die. A lot of people are getting the virus and they aren't going to die. And I think you become immune once you get it the first time. And they don't know that for a fact. But then the, the logic of shutting down everything in response to the virus so nobody gets it isn't that smart. It potentially really dense, really more dangerous than the virus itself. That's what I see right now. Now, I, I could be convinced otherwise at this point, but it looks to me like the far greater risk to you and yours at least as far as I'm concerned, the far greater risk to me and mine, my household right now, is the slowdown in economic activity that's, that's being guaranteed by our response. That's far more dangerous. Keep in mind a depression. If we cause a depression in response to a virus, depression will kill a lot more people than 100. Depressions have a way of killing people. A lot of people live paycheck to paycheck. They can't afford. They can't afford to have their, their restaurant shut down for a week. Why? Because they need that money. And we're, we're taking away their only source of income for a week, two weeks. They, how long can they possibly survive like that? That's the point. And the restaurant itself can't afford to not have the revenue coming in. So the restaurant may close down forever in response to a virus that wasn't going to kill anybody in that area anyways. Strikes me as far more dangerous and not a very prudent response. It really does. It's, it scares me a lot more than the virus. The freak out behind the virus, the irrational fear behind the virus strikes me as more plausibly dangerous than the virus itself. That's at least how I game it out right now. Again, the virus, I sincerely doubt I, anybody I know is going to get sick and die because of this virus, but a lot of people are going to feel the economic effects of, of our so-called wise actions right now. Strikes me as panic-driven and not very smart. Strikes me as irrational. Irrational. The other problem with irrational responses to fear, st fear stimuli is that if the fear stimuli persists, this is a far more dangerous potentiality than the virus goes away and everything bounces back. What if the virus doesn't go away? What if we shut down New York State in response to the virus and they still get 10,000, they still get overrun with, you know, 10,000 cases in the hospital beds? Then what are we going to do? Then we have no place to go with our fear. There's no healthy, reasonable response. I can't imagine what people are going to do then. Because if you've already gotten, gotten set the premise of let me, res let me respond, you know, at 100 when the, when the danger level is at potentially 4, then when the danger level gets to 50, where do you go? What do you do? Make sure, you know, send the National Guard to make sure nobody leaves their apartment? There's a real danger here. <laughs> the danger ain't the virus. That's my point. Hopefully people start coming to their senses and recognizing the complete lack of wisdom of shutting down everything in response to limited risk. Limited risk, as far as I can tell right now. Again, it's more contagious than the, than the average flu, but ironically, it's a lot less deadly than the average flu. <laughs> flu kills a lot of people. Maybe nobody ever noticed that before because nobody ever considered it all that dangerous, but the flu kills a lot of people. So, as of right now, you know, again, this is subject to change. This is, I'm making this post on a Monday. We'll see. Tomorrow things could be different. But as of right now, I gain the I gain the situation out as the far more plausible risk to you and yours is the economic slowdown that we are pretty much guaranteeing. So there you have it, kids. That's how I see it. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen.